Hey guys, it's Greg with Buy the Bootstraps, btbootstraps.com. Check out the store, check out the social media. Wow, it's been a long time since I made a, a video. Uh, about four months now, actually. I figure that with all the COVID-19 happening and everyone being in quarantine and lockdown, you'd think, oh, that'd be a great time to you know make some videos, make some content. But I, I decided I didn't really want to add to the negativity that was going around um, everywhere, actually. <coughs> so... We stayed off of social media for a while, didn't make any videos. And I was going to continue that until things kind of wound down and kind of got to a place where everyone was stop acting crazy. But it seems as though that's not going to happen anytime soon since everyone is acting crazy. And that brings us to this video. Um, the reason why I'm making this video is that I don't know where you guys live, all right? I don't know, like, like your situations, your cities. But here where I live, the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, um, ever since the death of George Floyd, which was a horrible, horrible accident event, you know, unlike a lot of people who are jumping to the conclusion that, you know, this is murder and the cops need to be, you know, thrown in jail and, you know, no trial, no conviction, no, nothing to do with our justice system, you know, they just want revenge and instant like instant gratification and I understand like I, I totally to a point understand I think it was wrong what happened I feel sorry for the family of George Floyd but I also believe that the officers should get their day in court but because of that and the events that happened afterwards we had our protest you know and I'm all for peaceful protesting I am 100% for people gathering and peacefully expressing anger or peacefully expressing their discontentment with a situation that might be going on. But what I don't agree with is when you start looting and rioting, when you start attacking people, you know, the moment your protest uh, goes from holding up signs and, you know, and, and standing in a crowd to where you're picking up rocks, knives, guns, Molotov cocktails, breaking into stores, burning down businesses, you know, assaulting police officers and police cars. That's no longer a protest. That is straight up looting and rioting. And quite honestly, it's terrorism, you know, and, and it should be classified as that. But that's now led to this ridiculous notion of we need to disband the police. Well, what they're, what they're saying is we need to defund the police, at least here in the Twin Cities which is just a cute way of basically saying disband the police. You know, that's the dumbest thing, particularly at this time, that we could possibly do. <clears throat> if you want to know what a city will look like without a police presence, look at what happened in Minneapolis for three nights in a row. And it actually went on and has been going on for a lot longer. They're not reporting it. They're not telling you about the thousand businesses that were burned down, that were vandalized, that were looted. They're not telling you about the 100, what, 110, 150 shots that have been fired in the, in the, the city of Minneapolis and St. Paul in the last, well, since the death of George Floyd. They're not telling you about all the assaults that have happened. They're not telling you about all the, the uh, burglaries that have happened, the vehicle thefts that are happening. There are gangs of teenagers who are stealing vehicles in St. Paul right now and they don't have enough police officers to go and, and stop it. You know, and that some of that was happening before all this stuff happened. It's only dramatically increased. So if you want to see what, what a society will look like and how quickly it will break down, take away those who enforce the law. The ones who you call when a tragic accident happens. The ones who you reach out to. I don't give me that crap, you know, and this is what this is what the protesters are saying. African American males, in particular, are being killed at a higher rate than anyone else by police officers, as though it's happening daily. There are thousands, if not, I'm sorry, take that back. There are millions of police interactions every day across the entire state, across the entire United States. Millions of police interactions. And a lot of those police officers, particularly in urban areas where, where you do have more police presence, they're meeting people, all ethnic groups, all the time. You're not hearing daily or weekly or monthly 
that police officers, white or black, are killing African American males at this alarming rate. In 2019, in, in the state that I live in, there were 13 police shootings that resulted in death. Out of the 13, three of them were African American. The rest were Caucasian, and I think there was one or two Native American. You know, we do have a fairly large Native American indigenous people um, population here in the state. So that number is just statistically not true. You know, and they, and they're, they try to make it sound like, oh, this is happening all the time. It's happening every day. It's really not. You know, and is there a couple bad cops? Yeah, there, there are. Should they be fired and removed and not have the availability to enforce the law or possibly abuse it like the guy who stood on George Floyd's neck? Yeah, they should. And if there's a history of complaint, then yeah, they should be removed. We ought to have mechanisms, you know, we ought to have mechanisms placed and within those the police departments to where they can be removed and be replaced with someone more qualified. But that leads into one of our other problems. Again, speaking from where I live, I'm not sure about you guys, but I'm, I'm fairly confident this is probably true in most major cities. Where I live, the, chi the police chief of Minneapolis, for the last several years, has been begging for additional officers. All right? There's only 800 officers in Minneapolis. Okay, for the size of the city we have. And that includes like the suburb areas like North Minneapolis, South Minneapolis. Like it's all part of Minneapolis, but they're different segments of Minneapolis. It's not just downtown Minneapolis. But the police chief has been begging for years for 400 additional officers. And that's just what they have figured out as a minimum to get, put enough officers on the street to be enough of a deterrent and enough of a presence to keep crime from happening. Our city council and our mayor gave them 14 out of 400 requested. 14. And the 14 weren't even put on the street. They were put on special investigation and in, in, like incentive groups and things like that. They had nothing to do with actually patrolling. You know? But our city council, who is who has now voted to disband the police or to have that discussion, we find out that through taxpayer money which means the money that we are we're paying for these services, which is a basic function of government protection, enforcing the law, they're taking taxpayer funded dollars that could be allocated to these officers and instead they're hiring their own personal security that we're paying for. For you know, for themselves, for the city council. So they can be protected but not the residents of Minneapolis. Lake Street, which is a popular, you know, it's a popular area in uptown Minneapolis, okay? And, and you know, if you've been to Minneapolis, if you've been around the, the downtown area, there's like downtown, which is where all the skyscrapers are at. That's where Hennepin Avenue is at, Nicolet Avenue, uh, Nicolet Mall, stuff like that. It's kind of like, it's kind of like our hub of the city. But if you go like less than a mile down the street, or mile and a half, there's what they have uptown. I mean, that's kind of more of the artsy area. Um, that's also where you have a lot of, uh, a lot of young families. Um, a lot of businesses are actually not too far connected to uptown in various different locations. But a little further down on the main road of uptown, which is called Lake Street, that's where you have a lot of, you had, you had a lot of ethnic, um, a lot of ethnic communities, a lot of ethnic uh, business owners, um, that's where that target was burnt down. Uh, that's where the police, uh, the police third precinct was at. That they, that the mayor gave to the rioters, and I say rioters because they weren't protesters at that point. They gave the precinct, abandoned it, which then got burnt to the ground. And now they want, you know, and now they want us to spend ten million dollars of taxpayer taxpayer money again, dollars, to rebuild what was already there, and not not address the issue. Of what's going on so these city council members like I said they let this they let Lake Street burn to the ground it looks like a damn war zone and again there were 15 or there's 10,000 businesses or I'm sorry 1,200 there's 1,200 businesses that were vandalized hundreds of businesses were burnt to the ground there was shootings there was mob attacks 
I mean, it, it literally looks like a war zone. You know, I have nothing but the absolute respect for police officers and first responders and military, as I said multiple times. You know, are all of them good? No. Not, no. You're always going to find one or two bad apples in a bunch. But that's not, that's not a reasonable excuse to demonize the entirety of everyone because of the actions of one or two people. And especially if it's a narrative that's being, that's being told to us by a Marxist group. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to say what it is. You know, I hate that phrase, black life matters. Yeah, duh. Black life matters. Everyone matters. All life matters. And I'm not going to sit there and say that, no, no, I can't say all life matters. You know, no. White life matter. Latino life matters. Black life matters. Asian life matter. We all matter. So I'm not going to sit there and fake and say that one race, one, one group of individuals have more importance than anyone else. Especially not the rate of murder that's going on in these major cities like Minneapolis, St. Paul, Chicago, Detroit, Baltimore, Philadelphia. I mean, look at the freaking murder rates that's happened, well, even before George Floyd, but after George Floyd. How many hundreds of gunfire shots have been shot in Chicago? How many people have been killed? And guess what? Those were mainly black on black crimes. Do those victims' lives matter? The innocent that get caught in the crosshair? Where's all the outrage for these people? You know? Where's all the hatred? But no, I agree with the statement black lives matter because all lives matter. But what I refuse to agree with is to support black lives matter, the group, the movement. I refuse to support, by their own definition, a Marxist group, a Marxist affiliated group who want to basically, I mean, I don't really know what they want to do. I'm not really sure what their mission statement is. As far as I know, they're just a bunch, I mean, honestly, they're just a bunch of racists themselves saying that they're oppressed when in reality they're not. And, you know, and people get on the bandwagon with this because, yeah, all lives matter. Black lives matter too, to include that. So I don't think you're going to find too many people who are going to not agree with that statement. But then it doesn't mean, oh, well, you agree with this, then you must obviously agree with what we're trying to promote. No, I can, I can say one and not believe the other. And I refuse to. But if you want to see what cities will look like without police, if you want to, you know, if you want to, you know, defund the police, which again, it's just code for disbanding, disarming, you know, reforming, which, hey, if, if you want to do reform and talk about ways to train people or maybe provide, for example, those 400 officers to the Minneapolis Police Department, maybe we could talk about rotating those police officers out of those high crime areas to where they're not overstressed, they're not overworked. I and mean, one thing to keep in mind that since this has happened, since just since the assault on the third precinct, 150 Minneapolis police officers have, have filled out forms and have hired a lawyer to represent them for disability claims to PTSD. That means from the already strained 800 cops that we have, we're now 150 short. What do you think is going to happen? You take away those, you, you defund, it really means disarm. It really means disband. I don't want to, if that happens, I will never go to Minneapolis again. Or St. Paul, because they're, they're pretty much two birds, two birds of the same feather. I will never go anywhere where they tell police officers or, or tell their citizens, we're not protected. It's a free-for-all. You want to know what it's going to look like if they do do this? Just look at Seattle and the Chaz, the Chaz Zone, the Atana Zones, and look at Lake Street from the three days of hell that happened. Anyway, comment below. Let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you later.